Hi, uh, Dr. Andrew Christensen here. And uh, this is Nathan Chua. And I'm the host here. I am doing this interview with Dr. Andrew Christensen, who is probably the originator of integrative behavioral couples therapy. All right. So I guess a lot of you Filipinos out there are not as familiar with his approach. And this will be a very good introduction for all of you here. I think it's a pretty recent approach, Dr. Christensen, right? That's right. Uh, it, it was developed by me and my late colleague, uh, who, who's now deceased, Neil Jacobson at the University mm -hmm. of Washington. I'm at UCLA. Uh -huh. And we developed in the early 1990s. I see. Uh, and, and obtained some uh, federal grant money to study it. We did a couple of clinical trials mm -hmm. with it, and um, it was shown to be successful. And so that's what kind of got it off the ground. All right. Okay. Thank you for that short introduction, uh, Dr. Christensen. Uh, should I call you Dr. Christensen or Andrew will you be can, fine? You can call me, uh, you can call me Andy or Andrew or Dr. Christensen, <laughs> whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. I answered all three. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let me just uh, give a short introduction to uh, you, my audience of One Life Only Counseling Services here in the Philippines. Uh, and Dr. Christensen, Andrew Christensen is a distinguished research professor of psychology at the University of California, Los Angeles. There's a big population of Filipinos, as you might know, uh, Dr. Christensen in California, especially in Los Angeles. At UCLA, he conducts research on couple conflict and couples therapy and teaches couple therapy. He is a licensed clinical psychologist in the state of California and has a part-time private practice devoted to couples counseling and therapy. Wow. You still have the time to do all of this. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, kind of on a partial retirement from UCLA, uh, so that I can devote my time to uh, to uh, working, training couples, therapists in the VA and elsewhere, and yeah. doing some writing and um, and doing working with a project I'll tell you about later. But anyway, uh, so it's a busy life. All right. So Dr. Christensen is devoted to the advancement of evidence-based treatments for couples in distress. Along with the late Neil Jacobson, he wow. developed integrated behavioral couple therapy and empirically supported treatment for couples. Since 1993, he has been studying the effectiveness of couple therapy, especially IBCT, usually with federal grant support. In 2010, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affair, uh, Affairs uh, adopted IBCT as one of its evidence-based treatments for couples. Wow. Since then, uh, Christensen has been uh, training uh, VA, uh, Veterans Affairs uh, therapists in IBCT and evaluating the impact of this therapy in the VA. And, and I might Along just with, say mm -hmm. for, for the Filipino audience, uh, the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs is mm -hmm. the largest single healthcare facility in the country. Wow. And so, uh, I mean, there are many, many VA centers and because they're mm -hmm. meant to serve all the country. And, you know, we have veterans going back. Well, most of our World War II veterans have passed away, but there's Vietnam veterans and Iraq veterans and Afghan veterans and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so there are a lot of veterans who get services and they get uh, medical services, psychiatric services, psychological services. All right, okay. So since then, Dr. Christensen has been training VA therapists in IBCT and evaluating the impact of this therapy in the VA. Along with Neil Jacobson and Brian Doss, Christensen wrote a self-help book for couples based on IBCT, Reconcilable Differences. I listen to this <laughs> regularly. <laughs> All right, okay. Translated <laughs> in translated in French, Greek, Korean, Italian, Polish, Portuguese. Wow. He also wrote a book for therapists on IBCT, Acceptance and Change in Couple Therapy, translated in Korean. I looked at this up on Amazon. It's pretty pricey, $54. Wow. I yeah, wish you could have. 
No, no. Uh, the the reconcilable differences should be a, a lot a lot less expensive than that. I mean, yeah. the original and also the 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 uh, 2020 book on uh, the therapist manual is uh, yeah. twenty dollars on IBC, on uh, Amazon, I think. Yes, uh, I got the audio. I got the audio book version of that too. Okay. It's amazing. First time I've seen a clinical book on audio version. <laughs> I was surprised they made it an audio version. Really surprised. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, acceptance and exchange in couples therapy, uh, which was recently revised and titled Integrative Behavior Couple Therapy. Oh, okay. So it's actually the first version. So I, I have that copy. All right. So with yeah, Brian the, Doss. The first version is now ex it's very expensive because it's there are very few copies of it left. But it's the. Uh, Okay. The, 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 the revised version is much less expensive and more up to date. So, oh. so we should get that. Okay. I do have that. Both versions, oh. audio and ebook. <laughs> okay. okay. With Brian Doss of the University of Miami, he developed an online intervention for couples. Our relationship, I think that's ourrelationship.com. It's available right. in English and Spanish. All right. So. Uh, yeah. That's a. I use that also myself, uh, so that I can use it with my clients, and I think it's a very useful, handy tool to have. Uh, yeah, and in fact, if people are interested in IBCT, mm -hmm. a good way to to find out about it is to get the Reconcilable Differences book, mm -hmm. or to try the online program OurRelationship.com. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a way of kind of doing it yourself and seeing what it's like. Right. Yes. All right. Okay. So we'll start with the questions, Andrew. Uh, we have very sure. limited time today. So sorry for a lack of follow up for some That's of the fine. answers that you might give. I'd like to ask you as many questions as I can in 30 minutes. Sure. All right. Okay. <laughs> but thank you very oh, much right. for sparing some time for me and for the Filipinos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, uh, when I went to my graduate studies, I never heard about IBCT. And uh, I only heard of you from a workshop with Dr. Stephen Hayes. Uh -huh. I kept asking him questions about, can I use ACT for couples? Can I use ACT for couples? He couldn't answer it. And finally, he came up with uh, two options. One, one of them was IBCT. So, huh, what's that? Okay, uh -huh. so I looked it up. And thankfully, there are no other acronyms that <laughs> come... <laughs> That no other uh, approaches that come with that acronym, so it's right, easy, it was right, easy right, for yeah. uh, for me to find it. So tell me more about uh, you. So Filipinos probably hardly know about you, uh, your personal journey as a psychologist, and how you came up with this new approach. Uh, I don't know of any other Filipino who knows about IBCT, much less be an advocate for it. Can you tell our audience more about the history of this approach and how, well, you've said a little bit about it, how long this has been introduced and as applied method, as an applied method for couples? So, so uh, I uh, went to graduate school and ended up studying families and mm -hmm. did my dissertation on families and focused more on, started focusing more on couples rather than um, uh, parenting mm -hmm. and family issues. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was trained in a traditional behavioral approach to couples. Mm -hmm. And that's an approach that, uh, you know, tries to teach couples communication skills and problem solving skills and encourage them to do positive things for each other. And it has some benefit. There's some evidence for it. One of the leading voices for that uh, was Neil Jacobson. And he wrote one of the defining books on that. And, um, and in, uh, in the early 90s, he invited me to the University of Washington to present uh, a research colloquium, but also to present a clinical colloquium on my work with couples. Mm -hmm. And I presented some new ideas for working with couples, because my experience was that there were severe limits of this uh, communication training, problem solving, encourage them to do positive uh, changes, um, uh, approaches. And, and, and I wondered how he would respond to it. I thought he might be 
very, uh, very skeptical of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but afterward, to my surprise, he came up to me and he said, Andy, that's exactly the direction I'm going. Let's get together, write a treatment manual and get a grant and study it. Mm -hmm. And so that started a, a long collaboration where we developed this treatment together. We uh, got some research money to study it. We did a couple of clinical trials. Very sadly, he died a, an untimely death uh, toward the end of our second trial. And but I carried on, carried on, carried the work forward and uh, and continued it. And so it was really uh, seeing the limitation of an approach that doesn't consider a couple of things. One is that sometimes some things about partners are not easy to change, mm -hmm. that partners don't want to change, mm -hmm. that are built into their character and personality that are gonna be very not easy to change. Mm -hmm. And also one of the paradoxes of couples is that sometimes the, the thing that attracts you to your partner mm -hmm. is also the thing that has a negative side to it. So mm -hmm. let's say I'm, I'm very attracted to a very ambitious woman. Mm -hmm. And so she's, she's uh, successful, she makes money, she has a good career, and that's really appealing to me, mm -hmm. uh, as well as lots of other personal uh, features. But that ambition has a downside. She doesn't have the time to mm -hmm. maybe cook wonderful meals or, mm -hmm. or doesn't have time to spend as much time with the kids and mm -hmm. wants me to take more of that role. Or, yeah. you know, so there's, there's a, an upside and a downside for almost every characteristic that you can think of. And we're, we're often attracted to the upside and then unhappy about the downside of that characteristic. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for and that. So focusing on emotional acceptance is a big component of IBCT. Yes, yes. And yeah, that's, I guess, one of the biggest realizations I had when I read your book, uh, Reconcilable Differences. I can remember, I think a quote there is, acceptance is the, uh, sorry, change is the brother of acceptance. Right. But, change is the younger brother right right uh, right yes very good very good <laughs> you, you are clearly a, a a reader and you take it in and you think about it um because couples often get into a push-pull situation where yeah. what they push the uh, the other to change and then there's resistance to that and so so by trying to push for change they sometimes make it even harder that for their partner to change yes yes and uh i think partly uh, one of your inspirations is the quote from carl rogers i think uh, it's when we accept ourselves then we change all right mm -hmm. okay right, so right. all right so this is something uh the next question is something very important because in my years of practice here in the country i think about let's say 90% of the couples who come to me talk about infidelity. Right. That's a recent infidelity that's been discovered. So, right. or it could have been historically. Right. You know, uh, she just discovered now. And with today's, uh, you know, access to social media, there are a lot of levels of infidelity now. It's not just, right. you know, actually dating someone or seeing someone in person. So, uh, there are a lot of sensitivities uh, towards yeah. even just, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to, I don't think, I don't know if it's uh, allowed in YouTube to say this, but doing uh, self-pleasuring, maybe. Mm -hmm, right. uh, some, some, because we are a very Catholic country or very religious country. So right. there are different levels. So even just a chat or a casual friend uh, that may be following somebody on Instagram, those could right. be uh, could cause very deep wounds in uh, betrayed partners. So, how would IBCT address infidelity? Is it something that's designed uh, to help uh, couples suffering from this? Sure, sure. And and first of all, we we want to we in IBCT we define it very very broadly so mm -hmm. that 
that that infidelity is uh, breaking a um, uh, a kind of understanding of what fidelity means in the couple. And so for one couple, fidelity may only mean the traditional definition of, you know, having sex with someone other than your partner. Mm-hmm. But, but as you indicated, you know, other couples, uh, partners might think that, um, to use your term, self-pleasuring to mm. pictures mm. or looking at provocative pictures of mm-hmm. other uh, other people, uh, mm. you know, would be a violation. Yeah. Or even having, you know, intimate chats online with strangers might mm-hmm. be a violation. Yes. Now, so, so, so. Uh, we don't have, you know, a violation is what the couple's understanding of mm-hmm. their commitment to one another is. Okay. Now, now with many couples, uh, they may have different understandings of it. Mm-hmm. You know, one partner may think something's okay, and the other partner doesn't think it's okay. Mm-hmm. But, but one indication of of how partners think it's not okay mm-hmm. is if they're hesitant to be open about it. You know, mm. so there's often uh, there's usually an infidelity, a secrecy component, mm. because my partner, even if I think it's OK that I'm doing this, my partner mm. won't. And so I don't want to share with her, uh, mm. you know, what I'm doing or what I'm not doing. Mm. Um, so so one is uh, that's the way we define infidelity. And then what what's important about infidelity is to help the couple have a constructive, mm-hmm. meaningful conversation about the violation that's occurred. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, that's hard to do. That's much easier said than done. Mm-hmm. But let yeah. me try to tell you a little bit. What we want to get the couple away from is what is typical, which is accusation on the one hand, denial, mm-hmm. uh, defensiveness on the other. So mm-hmm. one part angry and accuses the other, suspects the other, maybe even more than what the other did, mm-hmm. or the, and the other person defends themselves or mm-hmm. minimizes what they did. Okay. And, and that is going to go nowhere. That's not going to help them. Yes. But if they're able to have an honest discussion about it and a mm-hmm. genuine discussion, mm-hmm. then they can maybe decide if they want to continue the relationship and and mm-hmm. then uh, kind of how they're going to go forward with that. Mm-hmm. So in very broad strokes, that's what we try to do. I mean, it obviously gets much more detailed, but I'm just going to give you a, a broad stroke picture of that. OK, yes. Well, yeah, I think I remember the the thing that's most open to change is uh, the way they communicate about these right. past issues. Right. right? right. And um, it's really a, a big concern here because of the accessibility. I think, I don't, I don't know if you know, uh, Dr. Christensen, the Philippines is one of the most uh, social media savvy uh, populations in the world. No, I didn't know that. That's interesting. If not, if not the, yeah. the most. Wow, wow. Yeah, so uh, I think a big percentage of the population has a Facebook account. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So. Thank you for that. Uh, Now, my next question is one of the most common, one of the other common concerns. uh, It's not as common as infidelity, but still it pops out is longer term relationships having lost the passion. Right. So how does IBCT address this? Uh, Can IBCT work to enhance sexual relationships? I know it's not sex therapy per se, right? Right. So how does now, IBCT address that? Well, it addresses, it can address it in a number of ways. So for instance, I mean, a key about IBCT is that we're always trying to help the couple have a meaningful, serious, honest conversation about the issues that concern them. Mm-hmm. And, and 
often couples, the, the issues that concern them most, they avoid discussing those mm-hmm. or they get into arguments about it that mm-hmm. are marked by accusation, defense, denial, and so forth. Mm-hmm. And so they don't make any progress on it. Yeah. Now, with the loss of sexual passion, often mm-hmm. there's an avoidance of that. One partner may avoid having sex uh-huh. or something about uh, you know how they're feeling. And so, so one way is mm. to have an open conversation because sometimes partners um, are embarrassed to tell the other one mm-hmm. what they like, the mm-hmm. kind of things that would, you know, excite them. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe they have fantasies of, mm-hmm. you know, what the other person would wear or do or, or behave that might be a way to uh, increase excitement in the relationship. And mm-hmm. so we can certainly try to promote discussions that would lead to experimentation or mm-hmm. openness about what you would like to try. Mm-hmm. However, another key part of it, there are two other key parts for, for IBCT. Mm-hmm. One is um, to minimize conflict, you know, because sometimes just when people are angry at each other, they're not going to be, they're going to be passionately angry at each other, but not mm-hmm. necessarily passionately. Yeah. Uh, interested in each other sexually, but yeah. the but the other thing is that is the acceptance part yeah. that you know the the passion that happened in the early parts of their relationship, uh, you know, are partly the newness of it, and okay. and so so uh, it may not be possible for them to have certainly on any regular basis, the kind of excitement and passion they one had, once had, but that doesn't mean they can, can't can still have a fulfilling sexual, physical connection. Uh-huh. And so, so that's what we're after. And so sometimes it's the acceptance, it's the, the not having, you know, or, or, or realizing that an established long-term relationship is different from you know, an early stage relationship where you're just getting to know your partner and discover them physically. All right. Okay. Yes. I think uh, I've been talking to Dr. Blake Evans about this. And oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He said um, that um, passion at the beginning will never come back. It's, oh, it's right. once the relationship has gone long term. And some people just uh, have this uh, pursuit of excitement. So, right, right. so that has to be dealt with. All right. Thank you for that. Uh, and, and you know what? There's, there's all sorts of variations because there are some couples who maintain the passion, but it's often at great expense. They have a, a very passionate relationship. They get angry and furious yeah. and there's always up and down and sometimes uh, heat of an argument they'll have sex that feels very fulfilling uh-huh. and but, but it's uh it's passion at a fairly high cost you know oh, emotion yes or, i have yes. occasionally work with couples like that and they're very yes. interesting but uh but it's uh anyway that's the um, yes yes i i i I encountered some cases like that. Yes, that's right. very true. That does happen. Uh, in fact, I think I've read some books that say that sometimes, when, or some professors that say sometimes at the heat of an argument, that's when sex becomes more passionate. Anyway, right, right. Right. so, all right. So I don't know if this is going to be the last question, but this is a very common complaint by sure. uh, individual partners who call for possible couples therapy, but their partner is unwilling yes, to come to yes. therapy. So how would you suggest uh, these uh, partners who ha- or spouses who have uh, problems inviting their partners to couples therapy? What can they do to, con- right. to help bring them over? Right, uh, it is a common uh concern sometimes the partner is just refusing to mm. uh to come and there's not really anything they can do mm. uh, now uh, uh, sometimes if they if they uh approach it uh from a different perspective 
In other words, if, if you approach your partner and they think that you want them to come to therapy so mm -hmm. you can tell them all the things they're doing wrong and the therapist can join you in telling them all the things they're doing wrong, then of course they're going to be reluctant to come. Mm -hmm. But if, if, if one approaches the partner, I would like to improve our relationship. I know that, you know, I'm contributing to the problem. Both mm -hmm. of us are, and I would like someone to help us. That might uh, be something that the other one uh, considers uh, and, and is more likely to do. Now, mm -hmm. but, but I, I think it's also just uh, that, that even if your partner won't come to therapy, Mm -hmm. that that there are things that you can do on your own mm -hmm. that can benefit the relationship mm -hmm. um i mean interestingly enough you mentioned our online program mm -hmm. we that version is ideally mm -hmm. for two people mm -hmm. but it can also be done by one person mm -hmm. and and that one person can go through the program and there, and it, it helps them talk to the other one about some of the issues. And so that's one thing. Or even our book, Reconcilable Differences, is a way mm. to read that yourself and mm. uh, see some things that you could do. So, mm. so just because your partner won't come into therapy, certainly that's the ideal and the mm. most, uh, I think, the quickest way to improving the relationship. Mm. But um, it, uh, if you're willing to consider your own, what you can do, um, mm. there are a lot of things you can do on your own to improve mm. the relationship. I mean, let, let, me, let me just give you one, one example. Mm. I mean, this is a very straightforward example. You know, it, it takes two to tango. It takes two to argue. If one mm. person, you know, doesn't argue back, you know, mm. if, you, if you get into a spat where, you know, your partner's accusing you things, of you accusing your partner of things, mm. and then it escalates, one mm. of you can stop that escalation. One of mm. you can just say, this is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we're just getting angry at each other. And, mm. and I don't want to further the argument. So, so I think it's important to empower individuals mm. as well as to try to empower the couple. All right. Wow, uh, time flies. We only have three minutes left. Uh, uh, Andy, uh, I think I'll give you the floor now. Uh, is there anything uh, to end this uh, interview okay. that you'd like to share to our audience uh, here in the Philippines with regard to IBCT um, and some of the work that you've done to help people uh, overseas? I know that IBCT is available on ebook and audiobook version i got it easily from amazon here okay. so anything else you would like to add uh yes i i first of all i want to thank you for trying to bring ibct to a philippine audience i appreciate that and uh and if there's uh interest in further discussion i'm happy to have a further uh, conversation with you um and i i uh I, I would encourage your audience uh -huh. um, to, to, you know, dip their toe in the water of, okay. of IBCT. In other words, they yeah. don't have to, you know, go through an entire training program. They can try our online program, which is fun and interesting and engaging. They could get the ebook of Reconcilable Differences, and they could see what it's like to do IBCT from the inside and see if yeah. it helps their relationship. Yeah. And then if you're a therapist and, and like what it helps the approach it takes to their own relationship, then they might be encouraged to uh, learn about it by getting the book or yeah. by, um, you know, uh, uh, I, I uh, at some point, maybe I would do a- uh, I, Workshop. I <laughs> a, work, a workshop, absolutely. A workshop like you attended, you know, and maybe I could do a, an Asian workshop, uh, you know, for the Philippines or, you know, other other Asian countries. Anyway, um, uh, so anyway, I would encourage people to, it's easy to kind of get your, your foot, uh, to dip your foot in the water a little bit of IBCT. And, uh, 
And I, I would also say that, um, which you probably know, Nathaniel, working with couples is fascinating. Um, and I think it's much more interesting than working with individuals. And the reason is individuals are interesting, but when, when you work with a couple, they bring the problem with them. So, you know, when you work with an individual, they tell you about their problem with their mother or their, oh. uh, or their boss or their problems at work or their anxieties yeah. at, at work. And with couples, they demonstrate their problems because they will get into some of the dynamics right in front of you. And so it gives you an opportunity to intervene right when it's happening. And there's a, there's a, a kind of a thrill about that. Uh, that I think is uh, is exciting, very challenging too. And so yes. I would encourage uh, your audience, maybe who primarily do individual therapy, uh, to consider doing couple therapy, try to learn a little bit about it. And it may not only uh, help your relationship, but enhance uh, the practice that you do, the therapy that you do. So that would uh, be my closing words. All right. Thank you, uh, Andy. Uh, just to tell you as a personal testimony, uh, I find IBCT very simple. Uh, just reading the book really helps a lot. Um, and I've seen couples who get it, you know, very quickly. So uh -huh. I've done other approaches before and it took quite a while. And sometimes to the point that it doesn't even address everything. But I think IBCT can be done in such a short number of sessions. Uh, it's amazingly simple. And the idea of acceptance and change really kind of clicks, something clicks in them. So they realize something, oh yeah, <laughs> you know, I, that's why I fell in love with this guy or this right, woman. Right, exactly. Yeah, so exactly. anyway, so yeah, um, I wish I had more time with you, Dr. Andrew. I could sit here all afternoon. All morning. It's morning All here. morning. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for getting up early in the morning to uh, to uh, coordinate with my time here in Los Angeles. It's still a wonder of technology that we can have this face to face conversation, thousand miles apart, thousands of miles apart. Yes. I hope I can visit you there one day. All right. Sounds good. And I'm looking forward to the online online workshop that you can bundle up uh, like on demand. All right. Oh, uh, okay. For Hey, yeah, no, I hope I hope to have that in a year. I hope to have that within a year. Yep. Wow, I look forward to it. Okay. Okay, great. Take care. You take care. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you again.